So this talk is called Why do we need trap states when simulating disorder devices? Or an alternative title is Please stop simulating disorder semiconductors without trap states. And that's really the take home message. Um, <coughs> I hope once you listen to this uh, talk, you will sort of realise or come to the conclusion that if you're simulating a disorder device like an OPV device with polymer or something like that, you need trap states to be able to actually do the simulation correctly. Um, so um, I want to introduce, make a bit of an introduction about why uh, about uh, why I'm sort of writing these slides. Um, I then want to talk about standard drift diffusion models that are used for things like gallium arsenide and sort of ordered materials. I then want to compare um, physically disordered materials like plastic electronic stuff to, and many other disordered materials, to very ordered materials like gallium arsenide. And then I want to talk about why um, for disordered materials this distribution of trap states is important to reproduce things like mobility and recombination uh, correctly. And then I'm going to make some demos. So uh, over the last few years, I've noticed a few people, and I guess I, I was an editor for, of a journal for a while, um, and uh, sort of got quite a few papers in um, with people trying to simulate sort of organic electronic devices with models with no traps. And recently I've sort of noticed maybe two or three things that sort of made me, made me think that it's worth making a video, making a comment on simulation, or the importance of simulation, simulating uh, organic electronic devices with trap states and also other disordered materials. So the community, I, I think we should not be simulating um, disordered devices without trap states, like we should just stop it. And I want to try and explain why I think this. So what kicked this off on Friday, I guess, is that um, I follow this um, this chap, uh, I think he's in Mexico actually, um, called Jesus uh, Capistran. I hope I've said that correctly, I expect not. Um, he's got a very interesting uh, Twitter account, and he tweets um, about uh, you know lots of interesting things from his lab and uh, making uh, devices, and you know I think microelectronics as well. And uh, anyway, it's a very interesting chap to follow. And he said, "Oh, he's been playing with this uh, model called Delta PV." And I, ex I wrote back in a rather grumpy fa fashion, I expect because I've just been marking or something like that. Like I can't see um, that it's got trap states. Well, does it have trap states? It's my default question when I when people ask me about. Uh, when people ask me about um, uh, you know, when I see a new model, I was like, how does it have trap states? Um, and if not, we shouldn't be simulating disordered materials with it. Um, and the person who uh, wrote the model, I think, I believe, um, called uh, Gripsy uh, Romano, I almost certainly said that wrong, so apologies again, um, said he's got shock reader or, or re recombination in there, is that what I want? And I said, well, sort of, but not really. Um, and then I tried to sort of chat about this in tweets, but it's really hard to do science with 280 characters. It really, really is short to, really short to, uh, yeah, it's, it's very difficult to do. And what he'd done is he'd included this um, shocker read hall equation in his model, which is a very nice Python script, by the way, and it looks, it looks lovely. I've not used it, but it look, really does look nice that you can do a bit of um, simulation of, uh, of uh, drift fusion with just pulling something off a PIP repository. It's lovely. Um, but I sort of wanted to expand on, on this conversation a bit in this video. The other thing that sort of kicked me off into doing this was this paper um, by Sebastian Martin. Uh, and I've, I sort of it came out and I've read it and I swapped a few emails with Sebastian Martin about this. And uh, effectively what they do in the paper is they compare a Monte Carlo uh, model with sort of traps and hopping, you know, as you would imagine a Monte Carlo model to have, with what they call a drift diffusion model. So there's a drift diffusion model with no traps. And they say effectively that the Monte Carlo model can reproduce reality better than the diffusion model with no traps. And my comment on this well is, well, of course it can, because um, the material, your disordered material has traps, your Monte Carlo model has traps, it'll represent it quite well. Your drift diffusion model has no traps, and therefore it can't represent you know, reality. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I thought it was a very nice paper, nice take-home message that you actually need traps, but um, reality is we should not be using this type of formalism, the sort of just um, drift diffusion um, with no traps uh, to uh, simulate disordered materials with traps. It makes no sense. Okay, so standard drift diffusion models for ordered materials such as gallium arsenide. So let's look at what, what people did in the past and what we can do for ordered materials and then move on to disordered materials. So this is in principle in cartoon form, I like cartoons, the, um, a, a drift diffusion model for um, uh, an ordered material like gallium, gallium arsenide. So we've got an electron there and a hole there, and this conduction band, the valence band. This electron's got mobility, this hole's got mobility, and this electron can move around this conduction band um, like a cricket ball. 
um, it can just like ballistically and so can the hole. It's just like just like a ping pong ball or something bouncing around here. It's, it can move. You can think of it as a free particle effectively. And the equations you use to simulate this are as follows. Your Gauss's law, drift diffusion equations for electrons and holes and some continuity equations. So now it says demo here. I think I have to do a demo now. So I've got here a GPDM simulation where I've turned off carrier traps. So they're on by default for these disordered materials and I've just turned them off um, for, uh, I, believe I, or I believe I have, yes they're off. Um, so what I'm going to do is just run the JV curve. And look at the JV curve, there we go, this is in the dark, JV curve. It's got a very high uh, turn on voltage because I've got a big band gap of about 2 EV, but the reason for that will come clear later. Um, and if we look at this file called Trap Map, so I double click on Trap Map, whoops, let me get this. There's not actually any traps in this device because uh, we've got no trapping equations, but that's what the file's called. So anyway, um, here's the conduction band, here's the valence band, and the colours represent the density of electrons and holes in the conduction valence band. So as we, that's the voltage now at zero volts, so as we increase and we go higher and higher in voltage, you see the bands become flatter and charge drifts and diffuses into the device and the colour changes and it sort of fills up with um, electrons and holes. So here we've got uh, no electrons, lots of electrons, uh, no holes, lots of holes, and then as we sort of push into a high voltage, we get uh, lots of charge carriers in our device, as indicated by the yellow colour. Okay, good. So that's effectively an example of solving these equations. So um, let's compare disordered and ordered semiconductors. Um, so an ordered semiconductor like gallium arsenide looks like this. You've got a conduction band, a valence band, um, and you've got very, very few trap states. If you're, if you're lucky, if you're unlucky, you might have maybe one, one trap and a piece of disorder in like a million atoms. I like to think of this as effectively marbles in a biscuit tin. So it's very sort of ordered, ordered atoms, uh, very, very, very well packed. The opposite is true for um, organic semiconductors. Uh, in that, let me just check. I'm still recording. I am indeed. The opposite is true for organic semiconductors. Um, where you've got this sort of very disordered array of, of molecules, and you think of this like a bolognese and, sp and spaghetti, and when you mix them together, um, you, uh, you you get the very dis disordered material. And the result of this is you don't have a well-defined conduction valence band, but you have lots of trap states, and charges travel through this sort of region of, of, of all through these traps by effectively hopping between them. So we don't get sort of ballistic transport like a cricket ball; you get sort of hopping transport um, like a guess like a frog or something. So you hop, 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 hop. And the result of this is all these traps generally get quite full with charge carriers. So it's important to model these. Now, so <clears throat> I've just told you this fundamental difference between um, ordered and disordered materials. So it seems unfair to use this type of ordered drift diffusion model where you assume ballistic transport to describe a situation like this. It just, it just doesn't fit. So what we can do is we can introduce some traps underneath the conduction band, underneath the valence band. And what this does is it brings our model a lot closer to this sort of Monte Carlo type model. So this, generally speaking, I think is the type of model the community should be using to model these devices or disordered devices. Um, so why, I'm now going to try and convince you that, that having this distribution of trap states is important. I mean, sort of in a cartoon fashion, uh, if the material looks like this, you probably want traps. If it looks like this, you probably don't. But I'm going to try and convince you with some sort of graphs now that actually, uh, that you actually, this is important. So, uh, carry density in these devices. So this is carry density as measured by charge extraction, um, and uh, this is voltage. So this was a piece of work that I did with I think Chris Shuttle a while ago. Um, this is so this is carry density as measured by charge extraction. This is applied voltage. So as we increase the voltage from say zero volts up here, um, you can see that the charge density increases in the device by one, two, about three orders of magnitude. And the same when you switch the light on. So we can say that the electron density and the hole density are very strong functions of voltage and light. And um, you, you know, as you apply voltage, the charge density is going to go up a lot. Uh, that, that, that's, that's a rule, because you're filling the trap states effectively in these disordered devices. So this is for disordered devices. Um, so a mathematical way of saying this is the electron density is equal to, or is equal to effectively the integral of the density of states. So that's the the Gaussian or the sort of so this shape, this shape here, multiplied by the Fermi Dirac distribution, and 
effectively what we're saying is um, this, de this, this density of states is important um, and when you start to change the Fermi level um, the, density is going to, the density of electrons will change quite a lot. That, that's sort of the mathematical way of saying what that graph is. So the other thing is um, that not only does the carry density in the device change a lot as a function of voltage, um, oh, I've written charge density twice there, rather than quit, oh, that, that there should be recombination. Anyway, I'm, I'm sure you can, uh, you can imagine that that's to, there should be recombination rate, and this is charge density. Um, so if this is recombination rate, effectively the recombination rate changes um, considerably as a function of uh, charge density. So as you increase the charge density, the recombination rate goes up. And you think of this in terms of effectively like the sort of the bimolecular um, recombination in that the recombination rate is equal to a prefax, so k times n times p. It can be a bit more complicated than that, but in, in principle, um, the recombination rate is a very, very strong function of the charge density, the electron and hole charge density. And so, unless you've got the recombination rate right, you're not going to get uh, JSC, VOC, and the fill factor correct. Um, so, and you're not going to be able to reproduce these sort of JV curves. So, just to sort of summarise what we've got so far, um, charge density changes a lot as applied voltage. This sort of increase, this increase here is um, a strong function of density of states. Um, the uh, recombination um, is a strong as a function of charge density. Um, so if you get the density of states wrong, or the function of charge density is function of voltage wrong, you're not going to get recombination rate right. And that you won't get this right either. Furthermore, mobility. So um, this is sort of the traditional picture of uh, mobility in uh, this is a traditional picture of mobility sorry of, mo of mobility in a ordered semiconductor so you've got um, uh, sort of drift fusion equations here and you've got this electron moving around as effectively proportional to this mobility uh, these mobility values um, however in our sort of uh, disordered material it's a bit more complicated if you imagine that uh, all the electrons are free at the moment, so that they've got lots of energy and they can all zip about. And this may be because you've just photo excited them or something like that. Um, and um, they, you can say they've got a mobility of mu e. Okay, fair enough. They can all move, they've got mobility of mu e. Okay, so now what happens? They relax. So all the, ch all the charge carriers relax into trapped states, and all of a sudden they can't move, so they've got a mobility of zero. So we've got these two extremes. Very energetic carriers can move, very trapped carriers are trapped. Um, so we can write this in sort of a more formal way. We can say that the average mobility, the so average mobility of all our charge carriers, is equal to the number of free carriers times mu e divided by the the, charge, the number of free carriers plus n trap. So what this means is, is if we've got um, no free carriers, so all, there's no free carriers, so we're basically in that situation, the mobility will be zero. Um, if we've got um, lots of free carriers, then the mobility will be and we've got very few trap carriers, the mobility will closer to mu e. So effectively, it's sort of um, th th this, this ratio is effectively the ratio between these two extremes, so where all the carriers are free or where the carriers are trapped. And depending on the light conditions, the applied voltage, or whatever, this ratio of free carriers to trap carriers will change in our disordered device. So simulated disordered devices with traps. So we want to sort of add some maths to this, so sort of describe what's going on in this device. Um, so uh, let's just cut down there with a magnifying glass and uh, try and put some maths in to describe this distribution of, of carriers in our traps, in our traps on, in our drift fusion model. Um, now I'm just going to skip forward one slide and so I'll give you a spoiler alert. This is all from this paper, which is uh, the shock, a very famous Shockley Reed paper of uh, 1952. So effectively, we apply Shockley Reed Hall um, statistics, and what we say is we've got effectively very energetic carriers here to free and can move, very um, energetic holes are here and free and can move. And we have some distribution of trap states down here and some distribution of trap states here. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, and 
we effectively write a rate equation according to the shockley rehall paper for this distribution, for each, each sort of trap level within this distribution. And we allow electrons to get into this distribution and escape, holes to get in and to escape. And when a hole meets an electron, that's recombination. So this is describing effectively recombination and trapping into these, into these trap states. Um, and what this enables us to do effectively is to write, is to describe charges in our traps across the device. So here I've got some type of heterojunction, um, and we've got some sort of limo traps, homo traps, limo mobility edge, and hole mobility edge. And we can see, sort of, we can resolve effectively the, the charge carry density as a function of uh, position and um, energy space. So uh, let's do a demo. So let's let's just look at this. So let's get our device model back up. And let's uh, turn on traps this time. So let's turn on, um, oh, before we do that, actually, let's just look at the old output. So look at this. So this is doing a JV curve. Just watch how straight these, ba these conduction bands, bands are. Just watch how straight they are. And that's because there's not very much charge in the device to do band bending. So now let's um, uh, turn on uh, shock and rehaul recombination effectively. So let's have 30 traps. And so there's recombination and trapping. So let's have 30 traps. And let's just run the simulation. And let's look at the trap distribution again. So here we are again. So, but this time you see we've not only got this conduction band and valence band, we've now got a distributor of trap states um, within the band gap. And I've, uh, I've, it's got this two EV band gap just so you can separate out the, um, the LUMO and HOMO so you can plot nice on the graph. So as we as we go forward in time, so this is uh, this has not got many um, it's not got many uh, uh, holes here. There's lots of holes here, which bright yellow. Not many electrons here. Lots of electrons here. So as we go, um, so yellow means lots of charge carriers. As we go forward as in voltage, you can see the charge carriers start to flood in, and the device and, it, and the device will turn on, and there'll be lots of recombination happening in in there, and current will be flowing. Um, and you can see what's quite nice actually is you've got a different charge density here on your um, in your in your mobile carriers which are here than in your trap carriers, and you can see that there's a lot more band bending going on here um, because of all this trap charge in the device. So it's really changed the potential profile across the device. So I think that's uh, that's quite cool. Um, also worth noting, so this is a bit of an aside, is that there's no reason. Um, that the trap distribution should be exponential. So what you can actually do is you can change this from exponential with like an exponential tail to something that's sort of, you know, with a Gaussian, maybe an exponential as well, or do some type of, you know, different different arbitrary set of, you know, Gaussian and exponential. Um, Rerun that. It's probably quite hard to see with the naked eye, actually, what, what's going on. You'll notice it in the, in the JV curve. Um, uh, you're, are they different? I think they're a bit different. So if we try and bring it a bit forward, so one of these has got a Gaussian. Which one's got a Gaussian? Oops. So the Lumo's got a Gaussian, nominally. So where's the Gaussian? So I, I guess the distribution is a bit different. So we've got more more charge carriers here than here. Yeah, they look a bit different. This is sort of this, the charge carriers here seem a bit deeper. Than with this exponential, you can definitely see a difference between between the, the, the two bands. But anyway, um, the point is you might want to have those depending on what type of material system you've got or what 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 type of um, uh, yeah what type of disorder you think your system's got. So let's pop that out of the way. Um, so uh, going back to the original question, is this shock is this simple shock we read Hall equation equation enough? Well. This shockley reed hall equation that we were discussing, these tweets, effectively you derive this by deriving the shockley reed hall effectively rate equation here, and then doing things like assuming you're in steady state, um, assuming you've got like one trap level, and then this, this work, you can derive this formula. But that's obviously a very, very simplified approach in that A, you're, you are saying that there's free trap recombination, but you're not saying that, you know, you're not accounting for this, this trap charge in Poisson's equation, that's one, that's one thing, so you won't get the band bending. Um, and you've only got sort of one trap state. So this is a very much simplified approach, and it's much better to do this sort of full, um, 
full approach where you're solving rate equations at each trap level, each solving, each effectively um, uh, resolving the dynamically the shockley reed hall carrier distribution in energy space so you know exactly where your carriers are in, in your device. So I just want to, so that's really the last slide, I don't have a conclusion, so I'm just going to recap some, some bits. I'll just zip through this very quickly and re recap the main points. So my main point is, please stop stimulating disordered devices without trap states. Um, this is because, um, this is because um, disordered devices are disordered and you, they have lots of trap states and it doesn't make sense to simulate them without trap states. Um, once you put trap states in a diff drift fusion model, it becomes a, mo a lot more like one of these sort of Monte Carlo models uh, with trap states. Um, trap states are important because um, charge density changes a lot as a function of voltage and light. If you get this dependence wrong, if you get the, the charge density versus voltage dependence wrong, your recombination will be wrong. So therefore, you won't be able to get JSC, JSC VOC, or field factor correct. Um, the furthermore, mobility. Um, mobility will change. Average carrier mobility will change as a function of free and trapped carriers. If you don't have a trapped carrier population, you're stuck with just one mobility, and you won't. This won't. You won't be able to. Uh, you won't be able to effectively have that uh, changing mobility in your simulation, which also makes it much more difficult stroke not correct. Um, and um, if you're going to implement this, I suggest you go back to this original paper and pull out the rate equations, and um, and and that's it. So. Take home message I think is if you're if you're choosing a model like there's, there's lots of models out there make sure it's um, got trap states and you can do simulations you know like this where you're able to resolve stuff in, in energy space and if, if not think very very hard about using that model uh, before you start to try and fit it to experimental data so that's it I hope you enjoyed that uh, thank you very much and you can download this all from the GPDM website um, this is the latest version. Um, yeah, so um, enjoy. Thank you very much.